me on my way to Flipside Day One. We're on our way to see Bone House. These are my Ooh. friends. This is on Julia. And this is this is sibling Lemmy. Yeah. Let's ride. I get no House. They just finished their set at Flipside Fest. It was amazing. Everyone introduce yourselves and play, say what your instrument is and all that. I'm Allison. I play bass guitar. I'm Rain. I do vocals and sometimes I play guitar. I'm Joe Black and I play drums. So, our first question. Um, how do you guys feel about the reception of your new EP, Confounded? Like, just how do you guys think people took it? Did you like hear anything from any fans or? Confounded is an interesting album because most of those songs we had been playing live for a long time before we quote unquote for released years, it. Yeah. yeah, we played it live for two years. When we finally did the album release show, there was a big turnout, which was very cool. But it gave us some perspective onto our like newer stuff we're working on, like keep it quiet, keep it close to the chest. Do you have anything to say? So it definitely went in a little darker direction than the older material. I think a lot of that was just from the change in the songwriting and probably a little bit my influence being in the band, I would say yeah. that it just kind of solidified and hit a little harder than it used to. But I think overall the reception was pretty positive that it was a cohesive record and it wasn't just a collection of songs. It seemed like they all belonged. And that's actually why we shut it off at an EP. Originally, we planned to do a full length, but those songs all fit together so well that we just decided to go ahead and get it and send it out. Because at that point too, with Andre going on to guitar, it was gonna to totally change the way that we were, the dynamic of how we write together anyway. And we're getting even darker now. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah please do. Cause you're also a new member of the band. So. Yeah, I mean, you guys have been wanting to go in a heavier direction anyways. For and like then, a while. And then when Andre moved to guitar and then I joined the band on bass, Andre and I share a lot of influences. And so, like, not only was the band wanting to get heavier, but it just kind of naturally went that way anyways because we share those influences. Yeah. It's just who we Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. So, originally we were going to ask Andre, their guitarist, uh, how the switch from bass to guitar went, but he's gone with a cold, so uh, we're just going to ask the rest of them, how, how did that transition work when you lost a guitarist and then your bassist switched to guitar and you got a new bassist? I can answer that. <laughs> so, when Bonehouse was originally starting, because I found Andre on Craigslist, originally, <laughs> Cause I posted a uh, little ad on Craigslist like, hey, if anyone wants to start a band, let me know. And I found Andre and he was like, I do. And he was supposed to be the guitarist. Then we had the uh, Billy, the guitarist, and then eventually Billy left. But Andre has been, it's been a weird shift, but it's been the most natural shift. I don't know. Me and Andre and Allison and Joe all have very similar influences. And Andre just naturally fit into the uh, glove of being a guitarist and a, a soloist. And I call Andre my musical soulmate. Andre just, like, knows what I want before I say it and just plays it. I'm like, that's, how did you know? That, that was in my brain. Like, that was amazing. Good for you. Anyone else? 
I mean, he's gone, so I'm like, what else can I say? He is like the, the musical genius in the band, though, really. Like, he's probably the the most schooled musician I've ever played with, ever. Like, he really knows so much about music. And so I think that it makes it easier in a way with him being on guitar to kind of lead the band that way in songwriting than to do it back just in the rhythm section and lead more of the melody structure now. And then leaving the rhythm up to us. He is a, uh, I mean, I was like a choir kid. I was like the president of my choir and shit. But he went to college and did like jazz band and yeah, he's very, he's just like very intelligent and very capable and just very, very good at music. And he just knows what to do. He's like, oh, you want an F? And we're like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, we do. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> um, so you mentioned in your set that you wanted to switch to more hardcore. Were there like any, anything that like inspired you to do that? Or like what, how did you guys get that idea? Do you want to say anything, Allison? Yeah, I... Yeah, please do. So, I mean, I already kind of touched on the fact that, like, Andre and I have a lot of shared influences. Um, <laughs> thank you. I mean, for me in particular, I, like, grew up listening to a lot of, like, 90s and 2000s metal, like, Slipknot and Linkin Park and Korn and all that shit. Um, and so, it, like, that's definitely, like those are the kind of influences that I've been bringing in. Like those are the kind of risks that I've been bringing to the band. Um, but Andre having like a background in jazz and also having a little bit broader of a, a musical taste, he'll like, like I think rot is a good example. Like I brought that in. That was just a really straightforward punk riff. And then he turned it into something like all these like cool, like sweeping arpeggios and, yeah. It just like I, th I think it like turned it into something really cool, so. Yeah. Yeah. I think there were two things that were like two points that were the catalyst to us going toward hardcore, is when we did "Too Drunk to Fuck" by the Dead Kennedys, yeah. and then we saw the audience reaction it was like holy shit, and then a lot of people were like, even older punks were like, we've never seen anybody take on the Dead Kennedys like that and do it right, and then when we went to Salt Lake and played Black Lung, yeah. and we did uh, ceremony the ceremony cover and everybody's like holy shit nobody does the ceremony cover and it was like so natural for us it was like not even a stretch and it's like why aren't we doing more of this i mean when i started the band i wanted it to be very dead brother focused and dead brother i wouldn't call hardcore even in the slightest i guess they're more bluesy but even the dead brother was a little bit hard for sure yeah. Dead Weather was definitely harder than I wanted my band to sound when it first started. And now it's like everyone understands my, like, my favorite album, Ronald Park by Ceremony, is the best album ever. I love hardcore. I love edgy. I love angry. And then finally it just, like, clicked. We all get it. And it's very cool. We all want to be angry and loud and fuck you and it's awesome yeah. yeah so what are your favorite songs to play each of you uh individually like it can originals? be yeah originals or covers or just uh in general what songs do you guys like like playing mm. i'm sorry i'm hitting it oh, you're good. um i i really enjoy playing um paul revere i think that song just it fucks so hard. It fucks. Um, but I was like, I wasn't part of writing that song, so I think I ha I have to say that like so far, my favorite one that we played live is probably Lividity. Um, because that's that was our first song tonight. Our first new song. Yeah, I like. <laughs> wait, that wasn't yeah. our first. No, Rot was our first new song. No, but our first like our brand new one that we played tonight. Yeah. Um, so it's like it's a song that like. I had a part in making, but it's also just that that fucking bass riff during the verse is just nasty. It's just fucking gross, and it's it's dumb, but it's fun to play. I really like um, "Confounded" because I love to yell, but I do love our new song "Lividity" and our other new song. Uh, 
incorrigible, incorruptible, incorruptible slash goth for 2069. Um, I just love our new stuff. Our new album is going to be great. I think Rod's probably my favorite one to play live because we all do gang vocals and it's really pumped up and super intense live. And it seems like the feedback we get on it when we play it every show, people, like, they just click with it as soon as we dig into it. Yeah. Okay, we have a very silly question for our last one. It is, if you guys were a Spice Girl, what would your spice be? I'm baby. Coriander. In high school, this uh, very sweet gay man called me ethereal spice, so I guess I'm ethereal spice. Already said I'm baby. Yeah, say it. I'm baby spice. He's baby spice. Okay, thank you guys so much. That's so valid, actually. <laughs> All right, thank you guys so much for coming. We really appreciate thank you. it. Like, literally, thank you so much. <laughs> it's so fun. Okay, thank you guys. Thank you.